Okay, we have listened to <clears throat> everyone and how this will work. We will start with appellant letter number one, uh, Ryan Pilgrim. So, Mr. Mayor? Yes. May I just reiterate what the decision process we're going to be going sure. through? Sure, that'd be great. Um, now that you've heard the arguments um, and the response from the respondent, from the applicant, I mean, you have the choice of one of three choices of action um, to be made on each appeal. You can sustain the Board of Adjustment's decision in whole or in part. You can reverse the decision in whole or in part. Or you can remand the matter in whole or in part back to the BOA as long as an applicant has demonstrated that there is new material information um, which was not available and that could not be um, readily discovered at the time of the Board of Adjustment hearing. Um, and if you do remand it back to the Board of Adjustment, give directions to gather the additional material information, and then have the Board of Adjustment provide a decision along with a reason statement based upon the original um, evidence and the additional evidence. I have a question for okay. you, Mr. Hall. Um, if we decide to, for instance, on any one of these appeals, to remand it back, does that stop the proceeding? Does it, or do we have to, we would have to rule on all of them we, we regardless will, of whether yes, it's I, upheld, remanded, or we have to overturned? Discuss, we have to discuss every single letter. There so. are five appeals, yep. and they each one need to be addressed. And so. if you okay. uphold four of them, and if you decide to remand one back, that would be the only one that would go back, or whatever your decision is today. So we will start with letter number one, and... Uh, or other questions for staff or whatever? Did you have? No, I was just going to start. Okay, go ahead, Catherine. Okay, well, in the first letter I moved to remand. Um, hold on. Got to look at my motion. I moved to remand the appeal based on criteria four and seven that had to do with parking times and to send it back to the Board of the Adjustment. Board of Adjustment because it was in conflict with the comprehensive plan and they said quote can't compare educational parking to other uses given there was no data given and that goes with the one that said there was no evidence not an, enough evidence available at the time I'll second that okay we got a motion uh, by Catherine sorry that was kind of bumpy and a second by Jim to remand appellant letter number one back. We will have further discussion and let other counselors discuss it because of criteria four and seven based on Catherine's interpretation. John? Uh, he had his. Art? I have my paw up there, but um, staff. In the three versions of parking requirements that staff put together as part of the original documentation, you had one for auditorium, you had one for uh, uh, residents, and then the last one was for business and mixed use. And that was arrived at at 57 parking spaces. Correct. Where did 47 come from? So the 47, we talked about if, the, if we were to displace this whole hearing and focus on a educational institution outside of central business zone, uh, the existing number that we came up with for full-time equivalent students plus the 44 staff, we subtracted that from the 57 of the proposed use on scenario three, which would give us an additional 47 stalls required. Additional beyond? Beyond no normal use if it was seen as retail. It, it, basically, the impact of retail within the community, like if it was uh, essentially the um, retail by right, or, or commercial property by right, that, that would be an impact of, of a total of 57 parking stalls within central business. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if we um, look at that projected use and then superimpose it over the use of a educational institution, that's where we got that total of 47 stalls from. So is the calculus for the educational institution the one space for each faculty member plus one for every five students? Correct. So 60 plus 44. I'll go back to the presentation mm -hmm. here. <laughs> oh, 
went a little too far. Quick on the trigger there. So, one parking stall per faculty or staff member plus one for every uh, five students. That's now, we look at the total enrollment, which would equal 300 students and 44 faculty. So outside of the central business zone, the overall parking requirement would be for 104 parking stalls. And if we look at scenario three, where the conversion from a mixture of retail and office spaces to the overall park demand, if, if we were to let CJ's and the existing building go to traditional retail and office space, the overall parking demand within downtown would be a total of 50, 57 spaces. That number was extrapolated from the overall square footage of multiple floors, as well as any, we omitted any kind of common areas, assembly areas, hallways, and we got the total amount of parking spaces by the square footage, which is essentially any, anywhere else within the motor business district or general business district. So we have got those 104 stalls minus the 57, gave us the total requirement of 47 spaces beyond normal use. I see where it came from. I'm not sure I'm in agreement, but. Do you have a question, Jim? Yeah, I, for Ryan. Um, I attended the, the first meeting, and, and uh, when there was no data for the noon hour parking thing, that was the kind of stood out. And, and I know Mr. Long questioned that, why there was no data for the 11 to 1 area when the, a lot of people are downtown having lunch and, and uh, using those businesses and um, there would be a high demand for that. And, and I was wondering how much, how difficult would it be to, for you guys to provide that information to Board of Adjustment for, if it is remanded, and that's basically my basis for seconding. Certainly. So, so there's two points in that. The the two uh, audits on from the 9 a.m. and 2 p.m., that was based off of the IT uh, standards, which talks about the, the two visits for students. That's where we derived that data from. We weren't looking at the overall impact on specifics of uh, business used at the peak hour of noon or at lunch hour because it was coinciding with the specific use of that property not necessarily the, the specific cumulative impact use. Uh, the other portion of that question was in regards to the board's uh, response about having a noontime study. Uh, staff can only disclose so much information when corresponding with the Board of Adjustments with an upcoming conditional use permit. Uh, it would be considered ex parte to get too much information and disclose detailed studies of what we we're planning on doing. So we, we have to walk a fine line with acquiring as much data as we can without providing the Board of Adjustments with some or swaying their, their decision in some uh, manner of course through ex parte communication. So it, it would be plausible to take back to the Board of Adjustments. There are things to consider, though, if it does get remanded. Uh, we've got a certain time frame to take care of that overall parking study. The parking study was also conducted while we still had full-time students at the University of Idaho and WSU, which would have an impact on the data. So any, any items that get remanded back would have to be taken into consideration that the data may not truly reflect, <coughs> reflect what happened at the time of the initial parking audit. I'm going to move on to, we have, we've got a couple of counselors down here, both John Weber and Gina Teruccio, and I don't. Well, I, I share the concern about the, the, the per perceived gap uh, in data, but I also um, resonate pretty strongly with uh, Dr. Merkel's statements about um, the onerous task of all of a sudden gathering all of this information. So I'm straddling the fence at this point. John? I, I agree with you, Gene. I think that uh, at this point we could spend the next 10 years having someone say, well, you didn't look at this, you didn't look at this, you didn't look at this. And that, uh, I think, would uh, defeat the purpose of having a planning and zoning. It would defeat the uh, purpose of having a board of adjustment. And then it would also defeat the purpose of Moscow being a business-friendly town. And when I hear these complaints about parking, uh, parking in Moscow 
has always been an issue. I've lived here since 1954. Parking is always an issue, and the only way that we're going to improve parking would be to take half the buildings off of Main Street and turn them into a parking lot. Of course, we're not going to do that. But the issue of there isn't enough parking, I, 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 I simply don't buy it. If you want to park in downtown, you can park in downtown. I am, I'm not in agreement with that motion.